Hello everyone, welcome to Ayaz Tech. I am Ayaz Zafar and today we are diving into an exciting topic in the world of web development. In this tutorial, we are going to explore how to implement loaders in Angular 17. Whether you are a seasoned pro or just starting out, this guide has something for everyone. Angular 17, the latest version of popular web application framework, comes packed with features that enhance with developer experience and application performance. Today, we will focus on those features that specifically relate to the implementing effective loaders. But first, why are loaders important? In the digital world where speed is everything, loaders play a crucial role. They keep users informed about processing status, reduce bounce rates and improve the overall user experience. Loaders are not just about spinning circles anymore. With Angular 17, we have more control over how we handle asynchronous operations, making our loaders smarter and more responsive to user needs. From simple spinners to complex progress bar, loaders tell users that something is happening behind the scenes. Throughout this tutorial, we will look at various types of loaders, how to implement them in Angular 17 and how to make them seamless part of your user interface. So grab a cup of coffee and let's get started on this journey to create engaging and informative loaders in Angular 17. Don't forget to hit the like button if you find this tutorial helpful. As we dive into the world of loaders, let's first clarify what a loader is. In web development, a loader often called a loading indicator or spinner is a visual cue that indicates that some process is ongoing in the background. Loaders are crucial in web applications because they inform users that their request is being processed. Without a loader, a user might think that app is unresponsive or broken if there is a delay. A well-designed loader can significantly enhance user experience, keeping users engaged while they wait. There are several types of loader, each serving different purposes. The most common one is the spinner, a simple rotating circle or graphic. It's widely used due to its simplicity and minimalistic appeal. Next, we have the progress bar. Unlike spinners, the progress bars give a visual indication of how much of the process is complete. They are ideal for scenarios where the waiting time can be estimated like file uploads. Another type is skeleton screen. Instead of distinct loader, a skeleton screen mimics the layout of the content that will load, providing a placeholder. It's a great way to keep users interested as they get a preview of what's coming. Now let's talk about the real world applications. You have probably seen loaders in action on platforms like YouTube where a red progress bar appears at the top during the video loading. Another example is Facebook. When you scroll your feed, you will notice skeleton screens where posts and images appear. This approach indicates more content is loading without using a disruptive spinner. In summary, loaders are not just functional but also integral part of the user experience. They can simple or complex but the goal is always same to keep users informed and engaged. Great, now that we have understand what loaders are and their significance, let's get our hands dirty by setting up our Angular 17 environment. This step is crucial for following along with the rest of the tutorial. So first things first, we need to install Angular CLI, the command line interface tool that allows us to create and manage Angular projects easily. Make sure you have Node.js installed and it is as it is required for Angular CLI. So to install Angular CLI, you just need to run the command npm install dash g angular slash cli this would install the angular cli globally in your computer for me it is already installed and working so i will not run this command again so you can see i have angular 17 cli version installed with the angular cli installed we can now create a new angular project so let's do this by running the ng new command this command scaffold a new angular application with all the necessary configurations to create a new project just run this command ng new project name so once your project is created you can use the cd command to go into that folder of your project and open it in your favorite editor i will be using the vs code in this project so while creating this project you will be prompted for few configurations like enabling routing and selecting style sheet format for this tutorial let's enable routing and 
choose CSS for styling. Once the project is set up, let's navigate to our project directory and here you will find the several folders and files. So understanding the structure is key to working efficiently with Angular. The source folder is where the most of our work will be. It contains the app components, styles and templates. The app folder inside source is the heart of our application where we will add our loader component. Other important files include angular.json for configuration and package.json for dependencies. Now let's get to the exciting part creating our very own loader component in angular 17 this basic loader will be great starting point to understand the process first we need to create a new component for our loader we will use angular cli for this let's open the terminal and run the ng generate command to create the loader component After running this command, Angular creates a new folder under the app directory with our loader component files. You will find a TypeScript file for the component logic, an HTML file for the template and a CSS file for the styling. Let's start by adding some basic HTML for our loader. We will create a simple circular spinner. So for that, open the loader.component.html file and add this code to your HTML. Now let's move on to the styling our loader. So for that open the loader.component.scss and we will use keyframes to create spinning animation loader. So we are adding a border of 5 pixel to the loader class with light gray border and border top is going to be 5 pixel solid blue border and border radius is going to be 50% width will be 40 pixels and height is also going to be 40 pixels and then we will add uh, an animation with spin to second linear infinite and now we will define our keyframe with the name spin and now here i will the setting for the zero percent the style would be transform rotate zero degree and when it will reach to the hundred percent then the transform rotate will be will become 360 degree so this css creates a circular ele element with a border so the key part is animation property which uses the keyframe rule and spin to create a continuous rotating effect finally to see our loader in action we need to include it in our app component so open your app component.html and add it but before that make sure you have to import it in your app module or in the app component if you are using standalone components like this so here i will add the loader component make sure to import the loader component from the loaders folder and now go to the app component here i will simply add app loader save it now let's open the browser and you can see a simple but effective loader component in angular when you run your application now you should see the spinning loader on your page like this having mastered the basic loader let's elevate our skills by implementing an advanced loader this loader will dynamically respond to the data loading status integrating with angular services and handling error states so first we will make our loader dynamic it should only appear when data is loading when data is being fetched and disappear once the data is loaded so for this we will use angular's built-in http client module to simulate a data fetch operation let's start by creating a service that fetches data so open your terminal and generate a new service using angular cli in the data.service.ts file we will create a function that returns an observable simulating a data fetch operation using http client so very first thing is that i need to inject the service http client as i'm using angular 17 so it is possible to inject it by using simply inject function without injecting it with the constructor so for that i will define a property private http and use the inject function and pass it the http client now i will define a function fetch data observable would be the response type of this function and i will get the users and return all of them so next we need to modify our loader component to react to this data fetching process we will use the boolean flag to track whether data is loading or not and display the loader accordingly so go to the loader component ts file and here i will define a property is loading is equal to false and here i will add a function show loader loading boolean would be the parameter and this is loading would become equal to the loading parameter 
parameter that we just received from this function. Now in our app component, we will use the data service to fetch the data and control the loader's visibility. We will also implement error handling to manage the loader visibility in case of any error. So here, first of all, I need to inject the data service for that. Again, I will use the inject function. Make sure to import the data service from the data.service file. And next, I will implement the on init lifecycle hook. Make sure to import this as well from the Angular core. Next, we will implement on init ng on init. Now we need to access the show loader function within that loader. But before that, we need to have access to that loader component. So we already have it in our import array, but we still need to access it for that. I will use the view child decorator and we will access our loader component. Now we can simply access the component with the help of view child and we can access any of its functions. Now I will use this dot loader show loader function and pass it the boolean value true. By the way, in the loader component HTML file, we must have to use use the is loading property to hide and show this loader. So here I will add and if is loading. Now if you reload it right now, the loader is not loading and let me see if there is any error or not. I can see there is an error that it is saying that HTTP client is not available to use. To fix it, we will go to the app config and here I will add a function provide HTTP client. That's it. Okay. Now, if you reload it, you will see that there is no error, but the loader is still not showing. So let's look into the app component.ts file. We are calling this show loader function. Uh, let me add an alert here just to see if it is really being called. Reload it. Uh, let me add an alert here as well. Okay, this is being called. So the problem is that at this time, the on init, uh, the component was not available. So to fix that, I will use another lifecycle method hook. That would be after view in it okay now we will implement it ng after view in it now everything should work fine okay let me remove this one all right so let me remove the alert from the child component okay now you can see that preloader is showing now let's use the data service after showing the loader fetch data and subscribe it and pass it the callback function to handle the response and also we need to handle the error so we will pass another callback function as a second parameter and that would give us the error if there was any error okay now in the error i will show console dot error error fetching data and we will show the error and at the end i will if there was any error i will hide the preloader okay but if we found the data, then we will show the data in the console and we will set the loader to false. So let's quickly test it. I'm going to open the inspect element and see. OK, it is saying that expression has changed after it was checked. So current value true. And we can wrap all of this in a set timeout. We will add some gap so that everything gets loaded before this uh, perform any kind of change like loader and in the timeout i will add one second delay one second is too much but we'll reduce it you can add it to 100 millisecond as well okay now i will remove these commands so that it could hide the loader after the data is loaded so every time you reload it so it is still uh, happening very quickly so let me try to reduce the internet speed okay now it appears for a very little time let me make it too much slow. Okay, you can see it is taking time to show it. Now uh, I will, instead of showing it in the console, I can simply display it in the HTML as well. Data, JSON. And let me save the data in the data property. So here I will define a property data, any. And here I will assign data from the response to this data property. Okay, now you can see when I reload it, it is too quick that we cannot notice it. So we have to add the throttle again. Now reload it. Now once application is loaded, it will show the loader before starting the request. Okay, you can see that loader was showing and it has displayed the content. I can see that there is a, a deprecation warning. 
so we may change it to, to the way that it that is recommended so here i will instead of that i will use i will pass an object we can simply use next property and error property so that would still work okay in the service i can also use a different endpoint so with these changes our loader appears when data is being fetched and disappears once the data is loaded or if an error occurs so this dynamic loader enhances user experience by providing feedback during data operations now that we have covered the implementation of loaders in angular 17 let's take a moment to address some common issues you might face during uh, and their solutions i have gathered these based on frequent queries and my own development experience first issue the loader doesn't appear or disappears too quickly this often happens when the data loads faster than expected or there is an error in the loader visibility logic so like uh, like uh, exactly that happened in our de demo that it uh, was happening too quickly and we were not able to observe it so to fix it ensure your your loader visibility is correctly tied to your data fetching life cycles use angular's life cycle hooks like uh, ng in init or ng after view in it for initial uh, for initialization and rxjs operators like finalize to handle visibility after asynchronous operations complete another common problem is that loader blocking user interactions on the page it can be frustrating for users if they can't interact with other parts of the page while waiting a solution is to use a non blocking loader like a small spinner in the corner or a progress bar at the top this way the loader is visible but it doesn't prevent users from interacting with the rest of the ui next up styling issues sometimes your loader might not look as expected due to the css conflicts or improper styling rules to tackle this ensure your css selectors are specific enough to target only the loader component so utilize angular's component encapsulation to isolate the loader's styles from the rest of your application lastly a common query is about handling loaders for multiple concurrent data request managing multiple loaders can be tricky and may lead to a poor user experience for handling multiple requests consider using a global loader service that tracks active requests show the loader when any request is active and hide it when all requests are completed this approach provides a cleaner and more consistent app experience remember troubleshooting is an integral part of our development don't get discouraged by these challenges with practice and understanding you will be able to create seamless and efficient loaders for your angular application as we wrap up this tutorial i want to leave you with some additional resources that can further enhance your learning journey in angular and web development for those of you looking to deepen your angular knowledge the official Angular blog is treasure trove of insights and updates. It's a great place to stay informed about the latest features and best practices. Online platforms like Stack Overflow and GitHub are invaluable for community support. Whether you are facing a specific issue or just looking for advice, that's a global community ready to help. Don't forget about social media groups and forums dedicated to Angular. Platforms like Reddit, LinkedIn groups and even Facebook have active Angular communities where you can ask questions, share knowledge and connect with other developers. Lastly, consider joining local meetups or online webinars. These events are fantastic opportunities to learn from experts and network with peers. Remember, the world of web development is constantly evolving. Staying curious, connected and informed is the key to your growth as a developer. Use these resources to fuel your journey in Angular and beyond. Thank you so much for joining me in this comprehensive journey through implementing loaders in Angular 17. We have covered a lot today from understanding the basic concept of loaders to setting up our Angular environment and building both basic and advanced loaders. We also tackled some common troubleshooting scenarios and wrapped up with additional resources to further your learning. I hope you found this tutorial informative and that it sparks your creativity in enhancing user experience with loaders. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful then please give it a thumbs up. Your support really motivates me to create more content like this. Don't forget to subscribe to Ayasta for more tutorials tips and tricks in web development i'm always eager to hear from you so please drop your questions suggestions or just say hi in the comments below i will try to respond to as many comments as i can until next time keep coding keep exploring and never stop learning this is ayazafar from ayaz tech signing off happy coding